Hello, welcome back to the vlog. Please excuse my appearance, I haven't actually finished unpacking yet. As you'll have seen by the wee intro, this vlog is about the Baku World Cup. Before we get started though, I just wanted to say thank you very much to Fuel10k who sent me a very very lovely care package just before I left and actually fueled most of my trip to Baku. So you'll see a week up of that first. But yeah, just wanted to say thank you. I'm not affiliated with them or anything, but yeah, it was really lovely of them. So thank you. Sweet. Green bubble wrap. So we have some porridge oats, salted caramel flavour, <laughs> uh, chocolate flavour, and golden syrup flavour. These are my favourite. Golden syrup porridge. I think these are the pots. Yeah, I can see in there. Those are the pots. That's what's in here. Oh my god, snacks. Oh, granola. Look at all the granola. There's so many different flavours. Chocolate chunks, peanut crunch, another chocolate, fruit and nut, raisin and almond, and mocha. Ooh, let's just try all of this. See it's in the other box. Mm, this is so exciting. And then we have a second box. Da, da, da. Nice big card. More green bubble wrap. Oh my goodness. Look at all this. We have a ton of the drinks. So we have strawberry, vanilla, chocolate and banana. And then we have some of these more porridge pots, apple and cinnamon. Ooh, I think that's a new flavour. Um, and chocolate. It's epic. And then we have lots of these. Uh, cereal bars. Uh, we have salted caramel and chocolate. And I think that is something else. That's peanut butter. So yeah, that's so exciting. Oh wait, there's more, there's more. Oh, cookies. So yeah. Thank you very much, Phil. So since opening that box, I have subsequently tried the oat cookies and can confirm that they are amazing. I've also discovered that in the box that was labelled golden syrup porridge pots, there were actually a couple of blueberry and a couple of chocolate instant muffins. So kind of like, I don't know if you've seen those like cup things, like microwave muffins, but there's a couple of those in there too that I haven't tried yet, but I was very excited to find. Just again, thank you very much Fuel10k for fueling my World Cup. On to the rest of the vlog.
So we ended up sixth in the end in the mixed air. I was really happy with how I shot and I think Dean was pretty happy with how he shot for the most part. We just missed out on the final, which was a bit of a shame, but I think that's the highest we've ever managed to come in in any kind of major competition. And so I'm really happy with how we shot and I think it's really positive that we can play so high up at such a, a difficult competition. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to shooting that again. It's going to be Sonad uh, McIntosh. I just have to mention again that uh, Cairo performance in the final this year at the World Cup. It was uh, it was just amazing, and looks like this day was not like that one for Macintosh, but surely she was able to stay as long as she could, winning the fifth place in the end. So the match for the individual wasn't wasn't the best, it wasn't awful. I was struggling a bit, but still came out with a pretty decent score, so I'm really happy that actually recently, like even the sort of harder, a bit more ropey matches have turned out with pretty good scores. So that's really positive, I think, for me. The final is a bit frustrating, but in general, I'm not too fussy about it. As you can see, like I just my first five or six shots just weren't that great. Nothing like drastic, but it just wasn't that great. And then I just like couldn't catch up after that. The other girls were shooting so amazing. I started shooting a lot better after that, and as you saw, managed to climb up to to fifth place. But there was just no catch in the others. So um, no, I'm happy with uh, with where I ended up and. It gives me something to work on for, for the future, so.
one with the second final Shauna McIntosh 27 years old Look at that, Beers st still is in the lead. 1.5 of a difference, and McIntosh, Miller, very close, point one only. that Macintosh had. Look at that, the last five or six of her shots were just impeccable. I mean, that kind of shooting is definitely going to get you at the top. position. Pretty safe, pretty sure that's gonna be it. For Great Britain's uh, athlete, Shauna McIntosh, winning the gold, I have to say, watching her in uh, Cairo as well, I guess this is how she does it. This is how it goes for her. She just decides to do it and uh, she ends at the top of the podium. Now once again here, in Baku against Dustad in the end. 
who is absolutely one of the best 50 meter three position shooters as well. Absolutely amazing. They really gave us a, a nice show to wrap up this competition. And Shona McIntosh from Great Britain with the gold. Representing Great Britain, Shona McIntosh. So I don't know if it will have been super clear on that video, but you may have seen that it was hella windy out there in Baku. The elimination was a pretty rough score. I struggled a bit with the wind, I think. I came out with a 192 in the kneeling, um, so 96, 96. I think I was just getting caught out with the wind a wee bit. I was next to a pillar, so sometimes I couldn't always see what was coming and the flags on the other side of the pillar were always pointing right to left but the flags on my left were kind of going back and forth so I think I got caught out with that a few times. I think the, the prom was pretty decent again you just like it was windy so I got caught out a few times and then the standing was a bit ropey it was a bit rough. I think I fired two sevens and a handful of eights just not not seeing the gusts before they hit me. It was fine um, I learned a bit from it and then took that into the qualification. We only had 20 minutes between the elimination and the qualification which my personal opinion's a bit shit, especially if you're on the second relay. The first relay like obviously had I guess an hour and a half to two hours to go and warm up and get some food and like rest before the qualification whereas everybody on relay two were all like absolutely frozen anyway and you only get 20 minutes really to like warm up a little bit, get some food before you're then like moving firing point and, and doing your qualification. So I think that's maybe a bit poor and I think like the rules are certainly at the moment suggesting that that's not going to be like the, the elimination and qualification do have to be on separate days. They didn't have time to change it for this event because they've only just changed the rules. But hopefully going forward, that will be the case and the elimination will be on a separate day, which is always what it's been like in the past. And I think that works better for the athletes in general. The qualification wasn't too bad. I think I was certainly aware that I needed to get the, the nailing and the prone out of the way so that I had longer to kind of work on that standing and be a bit more patient with the wind. It didn't work out great in the kneeling, like I started really well but then was aware that I'd taken like a fair amount of time. I kind of took a few risks and stuff in the second string that didn't really pan out for me so it wasn't as good. The prone was just the same and then the standing it was was much better for me. I struggled a wee bit at the, the start of the, the first string and then it got better from there. I ended up at like two minutes a shot. I, I think I started the standing with something like 45 minutes left and I took down to like the last five minutes or something. I ended up like two minutes a shot just waiting for the right wind and most of the time it was okay. So yeah, I ended up with 569 in the elimination and then 579 in the qualification and made it into the final in sixth. The final was uh, was pretty good, <laughs> as you may have seen. I, the start of the kneeling wasn't amazing. I've definitely shot much better kneeling than that. I just like didn't feel settled and actually like in hindsight I wondered if the height of the targets between the 
qualification range, actually there's no wondering, I know that the height of the targets and the qualification range to the final range are, are not the same and for me that seems to affect me most in the kneeling position. So uh, yeah, I think I just didn't have the height quite right and, and didn't feel quite settled in the kneeling. The prone kind of came out of nowhere for me, I've been really struggling with prone for a long time and so to have prone like that was uh, was pretty, I was pretty happy. I think it was 106.4 for the first uh, for the first two strings and then it was another 53 for the last string. So I was really, really happy with the prone. That bumped me up into first place and I think I stayed there for the rest of the match. My standing was decent. Again, like I think I have shot better, better standing. So I was really happy with how that was going. I was very unaware of the score as I was going through it. I, I, like I couldn't really see my screen during the standing. So I was kind of looking at the, the monitor that was in front of me to see where my shots were going. But it just like totally unaware of the score. So I finished and they said that I'd won and I had to do all the interviews and stuff. And it was actually not until I was back through packing up my kit that Katie told me what the score was because she asked me if it was a new world record and I was like well I, I don't know what shot so I don't know and I believe it is a, a world record I don't know if I'll get it or not because there wasn't anybody there to ratify them but it certainly I think I'm pretty sure the the women's final score was Petra's from the world championships or from the European games maybe which I think was 464 so I'm pretty sure it was was a world record which is pretty cool so especially given that's my first like major match back really since last year but yeah I'm like pretty happy with with how that shot uh, there's definitely like places I can still improve on things to work on before we come back for the world championships but yeah I'm uh, really happy with how all that went. Some of you uh, bright-eyed people may have noticed that some of that footage says Baku World Cup 2022 on it that is because I I'm either a numpty or a lazy person and didn't actually film any of the ranges or anything while I was out there because I knew that I'd already done it last year and not used the footage so I was just going to use the same footage not having registered that of course the branding would be different just ignore that and pretend that it says 2023 obviously all the bits of me shooting and stuff like that are from this year and I wanted to say thank you to the ISSF for unknowingly letting me pinch some of their um, footage from the finals and stuff if you want to watch the whole finals and stuff, I'll put the links in the description below and you can go and watch them. They've got the full finals for the 10 meter, well, they've got the full finals for everything, but for women's 10 meter, women's 3P, there's also some like little highlights, clips, if you'd rather just like watch a few minutes rather than full hour long finals. And there's a couple of like interviews and stuff on there as well. But yeah, if you want to go and have a look at any of those, I'll pop the links down, down below. I'm only at home for a few days now and then I go to Sweden for a European Cup for 300 meter on Sunday and then I'm back for a little while after that thankfully. It's been a very busy few months I guess and I'm really looking forward to a bit of a... I say rest, I will be training but just like rest from travel I suppose. Be at home for a little bit more of a prolonged period of time. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So that's, uh, that's Baku for you. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you did like it if you could give it a thumbs up if you're not subscribed could you please subscribe it really helps me and if you want to follow my progress or anything if you have instagram i'm on instagram like subscribe follow that'd be great awesome well thank you and i'll see you next time bye